will travel no further because you are come. Here, you are at the beginning of time. Here was conceived and lived the great week of the creation of the world and the separation of the earth from the waters. You are at the house of the Father. In this house of the Father, each Pharaoh thought of himself as a son and wished to leave his mark upon it. Each added superimposed, overdid, outdid, through a span of 20 centuries. The bond is broken, the seal unsealed. The twin gates of heaven are opening. The twin gates of the earth are swinging wide. Hail to thee, Amon, Lord of Thebes, Lord of Lords, Master of Terror and King of Kar. Amon, King of Heaven, Creator of the Stars, Thou hast thrown open the horizons and brought all the gods into being. I worship thee, Amon. O oh, thy mother, creator of multitudes, king of the gods, sovereign of the tall plumes, thou, the great God, thou who givest the breath of life to all things and instillest joy into the hearts of men. O oh, Amon! And if one of you this evening were to voice the question that you are whispering in your hearts, Who art thou, Amon? The answer would seep from these walls, these lintels, these pedestals, these secret chambers, these piled ruins, for the answer is written everywhere in a thousand different hieroglyphics. I am the father of fathers, the mother of mothers, and the bull of the seven celestial kind. I open my mouth to speak in the midst of silence. I cause to be that men should have a path on which to tread. I open the eyes of all that they might see. My right eye is the day. My left eye is the night. And the waters of the Nile spurt from my sandals. is the god of the first day. It is he who is called Ammon. At the very mention of his name, priests bow the head. Sometimes Ram and God blend together, and a curly-browed sphinx can be seen leading the flock, like this one, that the sculptor has fashioned in multiplicity to guard the court of Karnak. The father is like unto an aged shepherd. His right hand holds the shepherd's crook that gathers in the dust of the stars. His left hand fondles a wild ram walking with him.
it was here in Karnak that he who is called Amon sat upon a hillock and fought the world into being during the floods of the month of July. For this land of Upper Egypt, upon which the most grandiose structure of the world rises, this land is said to have been the first to have risen from the primeval waters. And it was upon this land, where the swarms of wild duck alighted, the only land above the floodwaters, that men have built the city of God to the glory of his creation. Let's listen a while to the confused hubbub of words that seem to seep from these walls, thick with the inscriptions of signatures and prayers. Let's dream in this forest of symbols. Lofty and mysterious as a petrified oasis, this is the dwelling of Ammon. These are the mighty stone organ pipes of Kana. Let's admire this cluster of columns in which the architect has striven to capture the very sap of the Nile in the stone. That sap that feeds the giant papyrus clumps, springing from the rich silt, swarming with birds and reptiles. It is dawn, and we can imagine the daily awakening of Egypt, as if her hieroglyphics were suddenly to shake themselves from slumber. But the Egyptian is at ease in the circumvolutions of the divine. He is at home with the science of the beyond. He has a taste for side exits, secret passages, concealed staircases, the phosphorescent gloom of tombs. The Vade Mecums, the guidebooks for the journey which accompanied the mummy, are called Book of the Dead, Book of the Gateways, Book of the Caverns, Book of the Night. They are the only books ever to attempt to produce maps of the other world. Here in this place, I, Seti, built the resting place for the holy box beside the avenue. It is made up of three contiguous sandstone chapels. I believe this edifice is worthy of Amon, and worthy long to bear witness to the glory of Seti II. I, Ramesses III, conceived that more than one resting place was needed for the sacred box of the Holy Family. So, midway between the sanctuary and the river, I brought into being this edifice. And my temple shall also tell how I conquered the peoples of Asia and Africa. I... A pharaoh whose name is lost. So many contradictions are graven on my pedestal. 
I left the symbolic image of all the pharaohs. This gigantic statue rising against the western side of the second pylon, clasping to its legs the tiny figure of a beloved queen. And I, Ramesses II, the grand elder of the Ramesses dynasty, the flame of the 19th dynasty, I claim the honor more than 3,000 years ago of having completed this second pylon. At its foot, I placed the stela telling of the victory of Kermoses over the Hyksos from the east. The two of my images watched over the gate of the sanctuary. Only the southern statue has remained intact, but it is enough to keep alive the memory of my august reign. For 67 years, I wore the double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt. Three royal queens shared my bed. The third was the daughter of the Hittite king, the most powerful monarch of Asia Minor. You may measure the vastness of my empire, but to judge the span of my life, know that after her I married four of my own daughters and that the number of my children was 92 boys and 106 girls. Let us return for a moment to the distant centuries when the world's first great queen, Hatshepsut, was inspired to dedicate two golden obelisks to Ammon. Listen. Behold, I was sitting in my palace, meditating upon the being who created me, when the voice of my heart spoke, telling me to make two golden obelisks for him. My spirit took fire, thinking of what the men who would later see these monuments would say. They would say, why this mountain of gold? But my dream was beyond my power. My two obelisks were not of gold, but of single stone, hard granite without a join, and the expedition to bring the stone to me took seven months. <laughs> to honor Ammon, sent an expedition beyond the Red Sea to the kingdom of Punt to seek that precious tree that you succeeded in transplanting to the sacred orchards in Karnak, the incense tree.
sacred lake on the banks of which you have come to dream, for one can only understand by dreaming, this mirror set in the rock has reflected the finest firework display of antiquity. A dazzling gleam that has lasted 20 centuries. resting. We must leave the sanctuary. The sun has vanished behind the Theban mountains. Amon has vanished into the night with the sun, embarking once more upon that dark voyage that is the foretaste of death.